Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be watching um, how Rem speaks Japanese by a very decent YouTuber by the name of uh, Utah Aoki. Aoki? Yes. Uh, sorry, this is just uh, came out of nowhere. Uh, one of my friends actually suggested this and said it's actually pretty informative um, video. And this guy seems like a decent fellow. So go, go check him out. It's just link in the, in the description. I hope he doesn't have a problem with the reaction video that I'm making about his video. So uh, this video might not come out until I, I get permission. He didn't respond yet, so maybe later. But yep, yeah, let's go and see what's going to what he's going to say and uh, what we're going to do about it. Let me start and continue to one go. Hey guys, it's Yuta. So today we're gonna discuss Holy how shit, Rem speaks Japanese man. because it's a bit different from other characters and it's also an important part of her personality. But there's something about Japanese that you need to understand first, which is different levels of respectfulness. When we speak Love Japanese, we are always aware of this. Dolby. And if you use the wrong level, it can be very uncomfortable or sometimes downright rude. So it's very important to understand this concept. There's different ways of classifying levels of respectfulness, but there's two main levels. The first one is called keigo or respectful language. Keigo. And the second one is non -keigo. We actually don't have a definite name for the second one because it's a neutral way, even though we often like call it language. Tamego. But for the sake of remembering Tamego. fewer words, let's just call it non -keigo. As or for Tamego. adults, we speak Keigo with somebody who has a higher status than we do or somebody who is older than us. And we also tend to use Keigo with strangers. With non -keigo, we use it with somebody who has an equal or lower status than we do. And today, most of us speak it with our family members regardless of their age. And these are just guidelines, so there are many exceptions. It's also common to start speaking Keigo with somebody, but as we get closer, we switch to non Keigo. Hmm. But now that you know the basics, what do you think Rem speaks? Well, Rem speaks Keigo pretty much all yeah. of the time. I'll give you an example. And it's usually pretty easy to tell when it's a Keigo sentence because it has des, mas, or their variations, or some Keigo words. And this sentence has desu, so you can tell it's Keigo. Yep. But why does she speak Keigo? She's right. Well, it's, it's easy to understand Maybe you can say that. it's because she's a maid and Subaru is a guest, which is true initially. She calls him Okyaksama or a guest. Naturally, she speaks Keigo with somebody who has a higher status, which is pretty much everybody in the house. But this is only true initially because Ramu, her sister, starts speaking non Keigo with Subaru. <laughs> this sentence doesn't have this must or other Keigo words, no so this is so Keigo. But Ram also spoke Keigo with Subaru initially. Hmm. This is an extra respectful sentence because she uses ugokareru, which is the respectful version of the verb ugoku, to move. And you might know this is called sonkeigo if you're learning Japanese. And this is how they talk to Rosewall, the owner of the house. Again, "omodori-ni-narareru" is an I mean, extra I respectful that. word. Thank but God, I can Ramu understand that. Quickly switches to non keigo with Subaru as she gets to know him, as you can see in our previous example. And as you can see, the ways characters speak reflect subtle changes of their relationships. But with English translations, these nuances are almost always lost. So if you want to fully understand Japanese anime, you need to learn Japanese. And if you want to learn Japanese with me, 
I can teach you the kind of Japanese the Japanese people actually speak today. So click the link in the description and do subscribe. It. Do it, guys. But anyway, do it. Rem I'm gonna is do different it. from her sister. Rem continues to speak Keigo even after getting to know Subaru. <laughs> And this is when they went to the village together. But she's actually slightly friendlier than before because she calls him differently. In the beginning, she called him Okyaksama, which means a guest. But then she switches to Subaru kun. Generally speaking, you use kun with somebody who is the same age or younger, and it's informal. So you can tell Rem is not as distant to Subaru as before. But you can also see how she's different from her sister. Ram calls Subaru Barusu, which is a playful nickname to which Subaru makes a castle in the sky reference. But Remu sticks with a pretty normal way of calling him because she's not as playful as her sister. And if you remember, Subaru Thank starts God working for the house, so shit. now they are colleagues. So they don't really have to use Keigo with Subaru. But Rem continues speaking Keigo with Subaru. Of course, you can say that at this point, Rem doesn't really trust Subaru, if you think of what she does after. But even after many episodes when they are much closer, Remu still speaks Keigo. Like literally, so she maintains the main that's just the way she speaks. persona. But there's another possible reason what that she speaks Keigo else? with Subaru that we haven't discussed. And that's their age. If Remu was younger than Subaru, it would make sense for her to speak Keigo with him. Which could be possible, but they are actually around the same age. And if Remu was a little bit younger, it would be no more than a couple of years. So I don't think it's a definite reason, especially considering the fact that Ramu speaks non Keigo with Subaru. But interestingly, Remu speaks Keigo even with Ramu, even though Ramu speaks non Keigo with Remu. What? Holy <laughs> shit, yeah! But I mean, be that's because of the it's like, but they're twins! <laughs> Holy shit, that's <laughs> bizarre! This one is Keigo. So, ne, mezameta wa ne, Remu. Non Keigo. And this like, one is non Keigo. Like, immediately. Course, what? Ramu is considered older, even though they are twins. But shit, that's remember, so bizarre! In today's Japan, people generally speak non Keigo with their family members regardless of their age. So, this is highly unusual. Of course, the anime doesn't take place in today's Japan, so anything is possible. But in my opinion, the reason why Remu speaks Keigo with pretty much everybody is because of her overall personality, yeah. especially her lack He's of been confidence pushed down. Yeah. and possibly She's been pushed social down skills. Oh. Remu is more uptight and cautious, unlike Remu who is more easygoing. I love this man. Holy shit, that's like a whole different level of like, not even related to anything. But just explains pr like plot and her, her personality and makes her a bit of a more interesting character than she was already a fucking interesting character. But more and more. I just love this. Wing and friendly. Remu also kind of misjudges Subaru thinking that he is their enemy and dismisses her sister's lenient attitude. So maybe she uses Keigo to be on the safe side because she doesn't want to come across as rude and she doesn't know when to switch to non Keigo to be more friendly and casual and informal. But Rem's Keigo also has certain effects on us, the audience. If you remember, one of the common situations where you would use Keigo is when somebody is older than you. So when Rem speaks Keigo, it gives the impression that she's actually younger than Subaru. And that gives her the kind of younger sister personality, which some people find cute. Of course, speaking Keigo can sound quite distant, but 
the way you speak Keiko is also important because later on, the way she talks to Subaru is quite endearing. Yeah, I, I, I don't show me the episode 18 again. That episode was so my favorite. So the mix of her so Keigo and her sweetness make me has makes a certain me tears every time. But I hope you can understand the way she speaks Japanese tells a lot about herself and it's an important part of her character. And if you speak Japanese fluently, you don't have to analyze this. You can just feel it. But these important nuances are often lost in translation. So if you want to fully understand anime, you need to learn Japanese and if you want to learn Japanese with me, I can teach you the kind of Japanese that Japanese people actually speak today. So click the link and subscribe to my email now. group, Japanese with Yuta. Alright, see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao. Dude, I'm not living in 1997. <laughs> email group? Oh, I mean, okay. Go check him out. I'm going to uh, just give it another shout out. Let me just find the channel completely and just give it a decent one. What, the, the most thing I love, that Japanese band, Utah. Go check him out. Holy shit, he has so many good videos. Let me see. Do foreigners in Tokyo speak Japanese? Wait, do they? Oh, I want to watch... Oh, I'm gonna watch all of this. I mean, I'm not going to make a reaction out of them, because... Uh, that's just not... That's rude. But... I watched this because... Uh, it, it, it was related to anime and it was related to one of the characters that we all love to some degree and it's currently like a show but one thing that i just love about this is the fact that how he actually connected rem's way of talking and connected it to his like her mental problem of like uh, like siblings infer inferiority like complex and i just love it because it makes so much sense the fact that she would be she would be respectful to everyone if she her confidence is so low that she has to do it and if she just keeps doing it yet now she is probably po more powerful than most people that she shows respect to although not all of them but again i you can understand my point of view because uh, kind of ram lost her horn and the whole uh, ordeal with that but yeah, that was brilliant. And we have something like that in Persian too. And it's basically the word you. Because you is like you for um, a group of people and for one person. So in Persian, we have to and shoma. Shoma is basically a more respectful version. And it is related to a group of people. But you can actually use it for one person for mostly uh, older people and basically people who are you are going to show respect based on like the um, social stats but again with the sore and um, miss and all of that that is basically the same way in persian too like not not as uh, like profound as japanese but it goes and differentiates a bit more and it, the situation that that you are actually using it is like a bit more complicated because uh, the thing is because of the segregation i think it's getting a bit um, better now but women always uh, like per, um, refer men as sir always like the word aqa basically comes behind them or um it, it's a, it's ancient a bit but the word khan comes to khan uh, like the, the then and this is always true too. Men always refer women as Miss Hanu as because it's a very like distant relation between men and women in this country, uh, unless they're in a relationship or, under, or unless they're family. But you actually have to have to to some degree respect uh, use this respectful like language toward your parents and your grandparents too and uh, if you, it, it comes hmm, it comes different like it's, it comes in a different manner in like siblings like way of talking some siblings if they're a bit distant if you call your sibling by like sir or by 
it, it basically means either the sibling is way older than you, way older, like 20 years older than you, or it means that you are not really that close. You're basically calling each other with sir because and miss because you're not that close. It's basically the same like way of talking. But uh, nobody really cares about Persian, so I'm not going to talk about it more. But yeah, go check uh, this Japanese man. He was brilliant. I'm going to check out some of other his videos after uh, I finish this. But yeah, goodbye for now. Have a nice day.